you did work on G.I. Joe number one. I did. Um, I, I inked the cover and the whole issue inside um, over Herb Trimpey, another super nice guy. Yeah. Um, Herb and I used to be on Marvel softball team together. Uh, you uh -oh. know, after work, we'd go over to Central Park and play softball, all the people in the office. Oh, that's fun. And if you can imagine all of these comic artists and writers uh, are not uh, typically athletes. <laughs> So Herb and I were pretty much the only ones uh, that knew how to play softball, really, <laughs> to any good degree. Um, so we had a great time. We would stay afterwards after the game was over, and I would hit fly balls out to him in the outfield, and he'd catch them uh, for a little while after the games. But Stan Lee actually pitched in a couple of our softball games. Nice. So that was fun times. Awesome. Incredible. I got... I had the pleasure of meeting her two years before he passed. And a friend of mine that I was with is a tremendous Wolverine fan. And Herb grabbed the edge of the table in front of him, leaped over the table like he was Wolverine. <laughs> and I was like, I would full clutch the pearls moment because I was not expecting this. Not at all. I'm like, aren't you an older gentleman? <laughs> But he jumped right over the table to take the picture. I couldn't believe it. And now I will remember that for the rest of my life. So you telling me that you guys are just out there playing softball is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really miss him. He was a good guy. I We had talked about Craving the Last Hunt. So this happens to be one of my favorites. Favorite covers. That was a lot of fun for me uh, also because in the beginning, like the first three issues or so, Mike was doing finished pencils, but then uh, deadline or, or whatever reason, he started doing breakdowns. So the last three issues, um, I got to contribute a lot more of myself to the look of the artwork. Um, you know, and I was trying to keep up the same look that he had established in the first three issues, um, but it was just breakdowns. Uh, so I could put myself in a lot more. So I had a lot of fun on those. That's wonderful. And of course, I want to show you New Mutants number four, because of course, this was used as an advertisement for the series. Um, but this cover really stuck with me. It's one of my favorite covers from the from the early issues. Um, yeah, the, the New Mutants were fun to draw. You know, I, I designed them to be individuals. I, I was trying to make them just like if you were or I got superpowers. Um, I didn't want them to be handsome uh, and, and beautiful the way Superman and Wonder Woman are. Um, I just wanted them to look like average kids, you know, and um, it was really fun. That comes from my Mad Magazine influence, too. You know, I was more Drucker would uh, caricature the whole pot, the whole body, not just the face. So I learned so much from studying Mort Drucker's work and uh, learning how different people can look. Um, so I didn't have like so many comic artists at the time, uh, particularly would have like a, a standard face they would draw and then they'd change the color of the hair just to make a different character. You know, they didn't, they didn't have a variety of noses and face shapes and everything uh, the, the way I tried to do. Yeah, and that cover is really each each mouth is so different, and uh, I, I I'm looking and I know it was done intentionally with them each being different, but I bet the colorist was just so mad at you at all the skin tones. <laughs> if only they would be consistent with the skin tones, um, you know, uh, Sunspot Roberto. Yes, I was being dark skinned, and the longer the miniseries and things went on, his his skin tones changed quite a bit. Right. Um, but, you know, after I left the book, um, I didn't really read it, follow it that much because I didn't want to see, I knew it had been changed a lot and I didn't want to see really the change what of the other characters. people were going to do with it. 